Hi, it's Chef Mike with Tupperware, and today I'm going to make barbecue chicken sliders in the microwave in the pressure cooker in only 16 minutes. Love this recipe. Two ingredients, crazy. So I want to tell you about our pressure cooker. It's for the microwave, it's completely safe, and it has several safety features built in. Not the least of which is the silicone gasket in the cover. This is designed that if the microwave, for some reason, causes it to reach too much pressure, this will collapse down into the body of the pressure cooker and prevent any further pressurization. In other words, your microwave's not gonna blow up. Additionally, just fit it down in there very easily. We've got the pressure release valve, and as the pressure builds, if there's excess pressure, this automatically takes care of it so that you don't reach an overpressurization situation. This is the pressure indicator valve, and it's kind of like a butterball turkey. Once pressure has been achieved, this will rise up, and that lets you know that you're at full pressure. And when you take it out of the microwave, it also is a warning sign saying, don't try to open me. It won't let you anyway, so you don't have to worry. But this recipe could not be easier. I've got three boneless, skinless chicken breasts, and I'm just going to put these right into the base of the pressure cooker. And then I'm going to cover them with barbecue sauce. That's it. Now, I'm using my favorite store-bought brand, but you can use homemade, you can use whatever kind of barbecue sauce you like. But the key with the pressure cooker is that anything that is being cooked needs to be covered in liquid. So you want to make sure that you've added enough barbecue sauce that the chicken is covered. The reason for that is that anything that's sticking out above the liquid will become a fossil and that's not really very tasty. So now all I'm gonna do is close it up and cook. Now if you notice, there's an arrow on the top of the uh, cover for the pressure cooker, and there's a matching arrow on the handle. So to close it, you simply line up your arrows, give it a clockwise turn, and now we're closed, but we're not completely done because the last and certainly not least important safety feature is the locking handle. So I like to call it lock and load. So now we're locked and loaded, and it's going to go into the microwave for 16 minutes. That's it. Okay, now it's time to make the slaw to go with our sliders. And for this, I'm going to use our Quick Chef because it's really, really good at chopping things. And I'm simply going to add some onion. and put on the cover and watch how quickly it's chopped the onion. Now I want it a little bit finer than that so I'll just keep turning and there we go. So I'm going to add my chopped onion to the bowl because I like a lot of onion in my slaw. Your kitchen, your rules. Right now we're doing mine and I like onion. And then right after that, I'm going to chop my cabbage. And I'm going to cut it into sized pieces that will fit into the Quick Chef. And I'm going to have to do this probably in batches just because I've got more cabbage than I did onions. But it's the second verse, same as the first. Check that. Go a little bit finer. There we go. So that's my first round of cabbage. And sometimes you have to rock the handle back and forth to get it started when you overfill it like I think I just did. But Persistence prevails. Check it. A little bit more. All right. So there's my cabbage portion of the show. And the last thing I'm going to add is my carrots. And I found these beautiful carrots at the market yesterday. 
So I even left the stems on to show that they were totally, completely fresh. So I'm just gonna cut these into chunks. Trim off the ends. And we'll start with this mini for now. No, we won't. We'll start with all of them. Okay. Carrots make a lot of noise. But they are no match for the blades. Go a little bit finer. All right. And the carrots, whew, that's really bright. <laughs> now the carrots go in, and we've got the foundation for our slaw. Now before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and mix these vegetables up a little bit just because that'll make it easier once I add the dressing. There we go. We've got a stray large piece that I will move. Okay, now it's time to make the dressing. Very, very simple. And you make it into quick shake. Very simple ingredients. I've got about a cup of mayonnaise, whatever kind of mayonnaise you like. I'm a full fat, full sugar, full garlic, full calorie kind of guy, so I'm using regular mayonnaise. If you want to use one of the lower whatever, you're welcome to do that too. And then I've got two tablespoons of milk, same lecture as before, that's full fat. A little more than a teaspoon of white vinegar. If you don't have white vinegar at home, use cider vinegar. This is not rocket science, it's coleslaw. And about two tablespoons of sugar. And salt and pepper. And I like a lot of pepper in my slaw. Like I said, my kitchen, my rules. And some salt. All right, then I just reassemble the quick shake. And I quickly shake until everything is blended. You want to make sure that that sugar gets dissolved and that the salt gets dissolved, that everything gets mixed up nicely. And when it's done, we simply pour that right into our slaw. and then mix it all up. Now the chicken is probably just about done, but remember it's in the pressure cooker, so even though it's finished, it needs time to depressurize. So that'll give me a chance to get the slaw mixed up and get it in the refrigerator so it'll be nice and cold when we start building our sliders. So I'm just gonna mix this up until everything is coated. And as you'll see, this is not a wet, a terribly wet slaw. It's not swimming in, in dressing, I, I don't care for that but it definitely is gonna have a nice flavor to it. All right, I think that's just about mixed. And now, I'm gonna pop this in the refrigerator, let it chill down, and then we'll wait for the chicken. Up, oh, there's the magic sound. Chicken is ready. And again, notice that the handles are cool to the touch. I don't need pot holders. I'm gonna sit it over here and let it cool down. Notice that the pressure indicator is up. That means that we are fully pressurized. It is not safe to open this. You can't if you wanted to, so don't even try it. And this will take about 15, maybe 20 minutes to depressurize. Then we'll come back and shred the chicken and make those sliders. Okay, as you see, the pressure indicator valve has dropped. So now we can open the pressure cooker and take a look at our chicken. Remember to unlock the safety handle. Give it a counterclockwise turn. Always open it away from yourself. As you see, it's still nice and hot. And our chicken is done. So now what I'm gonna do is take out one of the chicken breasts and I'm gonna shred it because I like shredded barbecue chicken. And I'm way too lazy to do the old fashioned way of using two forks back to back. Let me show you how much easier it is with the Quick Chef. 
I'm gonna take my chicken breast and just cut it into maybe, four, these are large chicken breasts. So I'm just gonna cut it into maybe four chunks. And then I'm gonna transfer those into the Quick Chef. And now, I'm gonna chop it up and shred it. Sometimes you need to go backwards a few times to keep it going. But this is a nice product because you can actually hold it down with Mr. Gravity so that it doesn't go sliding around the counter. It also has a non-skid base which helps that happen. Okay, let's take a look. That's looking pretty good. I'm not quite there yet though. I need to do a little bit more. Okay. Tell me that is not way faster than two forks back to back. I like this a whole lot more. So I'm gonna do this in a couple of batches. Let's take another one of the chicken breasts. And repeat the process. And once I've shredded all of the chicken, I'm gonna add back a little bit of the sauce that it cooked in. I don't want it swimming in sauce, just like I don't like my slaw swimming in dressing. But I do want to moisten it so that the sliders are nice and juicy. All right. So here we go again. Take a check. Oh, that, one, that one went faster. Okay. Add that. And that's as much as I'm gonna do for right now because I'm hungry and I'm not willing to wait. So let me clean up after myself. And now I'm gonna take a little bit, as you see, look at that. That is beautifully shredded chicken. So now I'm gonna take a little bit of my cooking liquid, not a lot, and add some back so that I have nice, moist barbecued chicken. And if you need to add more, you can. It's better to start with less, because you can always add more, but you can't take it back. Okay, yeah, that's about the right consistency. So that's it for this part of our sliders. Now I need to get the slaw, which is nice and cold, because it's been chilling while the chicken was cooking and depressurizing. I'm gonna give it a quick stir. Get this other chicken breast out of the way. Now, I'm gonna build a slider. So I've got my slider buns. And a bit of a mess. So I'm gonna take my slider buns and load them up with some of this chicken. I better add more to the first one. I don't want whoever gets it to feel like they were shorted here. Nobody goes hungry on my watch. Now I'm gonna take some of the slaw, because I like slaw on my barbecue. If you don't, serve it separately. All right, not the prettiest thing, but pretty doesn't count. In this case, it tastes really good. So that's it for our barbecue chicken sliders and slaw, and we'll see you next time.